On today's show, evaluating the season of Clipper Nation's arguably most beloved player, Terrence Mann, his strengths this season, his weaknesses this season, what we should expect next season, and is he still untouchable? Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Cancun Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Vaziri, born and raised in L.A., and just finished my 19th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more NBA content throughout these NBA Finals. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All things Clippers. Nobody posts more about the LA Clippers than us here at Locked On Clips. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video, any news on your LA Clippers, you're going to get that right here with your boy. So... Today we're going to be talking all things T-Man, my favorite Clipper, of course, for obvious reasons, besides the fact that he always plays hard, he cares a lot about this franchise and winning, and it's evident by his body language, not just his words, and more than anything, he performed big in several games in the 2021 playoff run, most notably the game that changed Clipper history forever by finally getting past that dreaded second round. And for that, I will forever be grateful. Forever. Anybody on that 2021 team, I always were going to have a little bit of love for. But the fact that I always said we needed a Herculean performance to get out of the second round. I didn't think it would come from Terrence Mann, but it did. And he followed that up with a great 2022 season. And then we had the 2023 season. My first season here as Locked On Clippers host. And it was a lot of... Why isn't he getting enough playing time? But I'm, I'm, by the way, when I'm imitating these voices, I'm imitating myself for sure. We got to play Terrence more. We got to start Terrence more. Finally, finally, we get Terrence Mann starting, and then we we're playing at a at like a playing Terrence at like a point forward kind of role, no true point guard, right? So just kind of creating shots by committee, because again, this is the era of positionless basketball, and we had Terrence Mann playing point guard and it was going pretty well it was still basically just running the offense through Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and then we say look we really do want a point guard a a guy that's used to creating shots for other people used to getting assists Russell Westbrook was the guy we went out and got and that really really tanked Terrence Mann's minutes and role with the team that he was just kind of starting to build so that was very unfortunate it almost felt like in 2023 We wasted a year of Terrence's development. You look at the 2022 season, of course, you got to remember, this is the season that we didn't have Kawhi or Paul George for 51 games, right? Kawhi the whole season, Paul George 51 games. Terrence Mann, he started 33 games. He averaged 29 minutes a game, which is his career high so far in the first five years of his career for minutes per game in a season, is in that 2021-22 season at 28.6 minutes a game. He shot 48%, which is about on par with where he's been at this entire career. 36.5 from three, which is higher than this year, but lower than last year. And then free throws, he's only gotten better. But he averaged 11 points, which is a career high. Five rebounds, which is also a career high. And three assists, which is also a career high. And one steal, 0.7 is the closest he's gotten to one career high. So career highs in a lot of categories. But again... He was asked to do way more than he expected coming into the season. So it's kind of hard to look at that season and say, oh, Terrence Mann hasn't really improved since then. But I don't really know if he has improved since then. And I'm saying that as a big fan of his. And I do think a lot of it is the inconsistencies in the roles or the inconsistency in the roles that he has gotten. It's like, what am I? Am I the de facto point guard on this team? Am I a guy that's just going to go out and guard the best players at the point of attack and be relied on to hit spot-up shots? Am I a starter? Am I a bench putt player? Do I close games? You know, just kind of weird. And Terrence always, you know, has been very public with that when it comes to the, the Clipper media and talking about, look, my role's always changing, but I'm always ready for whatever role comes my way. However, it is tough to adjust sometimes. Now, 
So let's say last season was a waste, right? He averaged nine points, three rebounds, two assists on 52, 39, 78 splits. So really good splits. Started 36 games. So he actually started more games than 2022. Played exactly the same amount, 81. This season, though, after the Clippers had made him untouchable in the James Harden trade, because, so like, if we'll talk about that in the last segment, why he was untouchable. But let's just say for... To make it short right now, the Clippers really value him and realize that they needed point of attack defense. And they still wanted that athletic player with Russell Westbrook. We get James Harden, and when Russell Westbrook goes to the bench, we make Terrence Mann that full-time starter. And he held on to that spot all season long and started 71 games this year, which was his career high in starts. But it was a very up-and-down year for Terrence. It started out where he was just shooting dreadfully from three. On this, he ended up evening it out his averages, but on the season, he averaged the exact same amount of points as last season, 8.8. He averaged two more minutes this season, shot almost the exact same percentage, 51.9 last year, 51.5 this year. And then three-point percentage, he shot better in 2023, 39% this season, 35. And remember, it was at like 16 a couple months into the season. But he got it up to 35, which tells you how much better he shot as the season progressed. And he shot just 0.7 more three-point attempts than last year. So it wasn't like it was a crazy, crazier high volume. But I will say, one of the biggest flaws in Terrence Mann's game is that he doesn't let it fly. For a guy, I'm going to read his three-point percentages out per year, right, in order of his from his rookie season onwards. First year, 35%. Then in the second season, 42%. Third season, 36 and a half. And mind you, the 41.8% one in 2021, he shot 1.43s a game. Every season after he shot over 2.4. 2.4 or over, I should say. 2022, 36 and a half. 2023, 38.9. And then this season, 34.8. So he's this is actually what this was actually his career low. From three, 34.8. But let's just say it seems like he's between 34 and 39% from three, which is not bad. But then let's talk about the other thing, right? His defense. His defense is good. He's a pretty solid lateral mover. He takes pride in it. He works hard defensively. He's got good length, good athleticism. But, I, and I've said it over and over this season. I don't think Terrence Mann can be your guy that you say you're guarding the best part on the other team every series and we're winning a chip. To me, he's not that good of a defender. And it's not because he doesn't try. Defense is a skill. I think people don't talk about that. You know, moving laterally, anticipation, being a disciplined defender, knowing angles, knowing players' tendencies, being able to anticipate what they're going to do before they do it, you know, sitting on their weaknesses. You know, moving laterally and stuff like that, that's a skill. Some people just can't do it no matter how hard they try. It's like its like shooting a jump shot. People think you can just keep getting better at shooting. Some, go- Of course you can, but a lot of guys just aren't meant to be great shooters, whether it's their physical traits or just it ain't for them. You know, a lot of bigs, a lot of it's their hands are so big. You know, they know their grip on the ball is just a little different than us guards. So when I say us guards as a guy that's under six feet, I'm not talking about NBA guards, but still relative size, you know? So... Big men, obviously, you're seeing more and more shoot jump shots and practice from an early age. You can obviously always get better. But my point is, some skills you just can't get better at. Like, I can become better at art, drawing, and stuff like that. That was always a weakness for me growing up. I'm never going to be a good drawer, artist. Not. So, in terms of Terrence Mann, I think he's a very solid defender. I think he should be one of the guys that's guarding elite players. But the guy that's guarding the best every game... I don't think that's for him to win a championship. I don't. Luka Doncic, he did a great job on in the playoffs. There's nothing to say about the postseason this year. And if you want to say, how can you say that after what he did in the postseason? By all means, I'm okay with that argument. But it's like, I've watched Terrence Mann basically every single game of his NBA career. I don't know if I've missed one. I mean, I've missed less than less than 10. I can tell you that. I think he's a very good defender, but he gets cooked a lot. In, in point of attack. He's not the best screen navigator, and that's all. That's a lot of what defense is today. So I would say his pros are this. He's very athletic. He's got a good nose for 
attacking the offensive glass. Great cutter in terms of like spontaneous. Don't have to run plays for him. Can cut. He has short roll ability when he gets a screen and he can make a play. He can be a lob threat in that dunker spot. And he's always going to give you 100%. And he can still shoot the three ball pretty well. And when he does get downhill, you start to see what he can do. But if you look at his splits, I just want to read his splits this season. In the month of November... He shot 17% from three. In the month of December, he averaged six points on 32% shooting and 21 from three. We were having conversations. If you go back and check the episodes, we were having conversations about should he start anymore. But I always stuck by him. I did. I just said he's got to pick it up, and I knew he would. Then his splits in the last couple months are just crazy. January, 57% from the field, 48 from three. February, 57.5% from the field, 42 from three. Then March, 52% from the field, 42 from three. And then April, 73% from the field, 42 from three. So he was just going nuts in terms of shooting the ball. My problem with Terrence is that he does not let it fly. He still overthinks way too much. And he's a big time confidence player. It was all mental and why he was struggling so much. And I think part of it is this too. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save it for coming up. Part of it, part of why he was struggling And his pros and cons, a lot of it relate to play style of your team. And I'm going to be talking about that when I talk about what we should expect next season. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. We all carry around different stressors and different things that just put some pressure on us. Whether they be big or they're small. And when we keep them hidden inside and and don't tell anyone anything and don't release them, it can really start to get to you and can cause for some real large outbursts at times if you keep things just pinned up. It's happened to me a lot and it's not healthy. It's not healthy at all. Therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and to figure out how to work through whatever's wearing you down. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no added charge. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. All right, so talking about T-Man, the man for the big occasion, my man. Here's the thing about Terrence. His pros are that he's one of the best athletes on the team. He's a good cutter, all that I mentioned, right? He can knock down the three ball, can defend. Here's the thing about T. He's not the best player in the half court. He doesn't have much self-creation. He still doesn't have a very good left hand. He has a little solid step back mid-range going to his left but he doesn't seem to look for that mid-range enough when he's attacking closeouts for my liking. He you know, has the tendency to, no matter what, if he's attacking a closeout, he's going to the paint trying to make a play. And sometimes the defense is kind of ready for that. But I will say, he is a great finisher getting downhill. Problem is, in the half-court set, off the, if you're an off-ball player, you're not necessarily getting downhill very much. right? So moral of the story is, I think Terrence Mann is meant to play in a fast-paced offense. And I think that when we got James Harden, put him in a lot more just catch-and-shoot situations. And that's not really – I think that minimizes how great he is at what he does. And it's a lot of stagnant offense. With the Clippers, it's stagnant. We're a great isolation team. James Harden's a maestro in the pick and roll, but we're a stagnant offense. And we don't get out and run. And we saw that with Russ, Bone, Tyler, and Terrence Mann, Amir Coffey, that kind of setup we had in the beginning of the season before the Harden trade, that really benefited Terrence in my opinion. But this wasn't really ideal for him. And I think it took an adjustment. So he ended up being fine in the end. But I don't know if if you want to win a championship with that starting lineup. I just don't think you're going to. Like you're not going to. Even if Kawhi is healthy, it's just it's a little too old and stagnant. And then Paul George and James Harden, I don't, I don't trust them at all for a championship run. I don't care what you're going to say about, oh, well, James Harden's numbers were good in the playoffs this year. Like, we lost in six. Like, he had to do a little more because Kawhi was there. He had two great games. Like, that's, that's the honest truth. We can break them down on in, on film if you want, if you're really that passionate about Harden. Well, I, will, I probably won't break it down with anybody like that. Anyway, yeah. And then Paul George, there's no defense for him. So point is, I'm, I think that we would need to put Terrence back on the bench. If you want to win a championship, I think he can be one of those guys that defends. Like he's like, 
a Nikhil Alexander Walker or Bruce Brown on a championship team. And Bruce Brown came off the bench. He's not as good as KCP. That's why he didn't start. So, but can we upgrade there? That's the thing. Can we upgrade with the fact that we have to re-sign James? We got to re-sign Paul. You know, we're going to have only enough for, we're going to be over the second tax apron. So we won't be we won't be able to get a mid-level exception. Oh, you, you think you're going to find a better role player than Terrence Mann on a vet men? No, you're probably starting the Intuit Dome era with that starting lineup. Harden, Paul, Kawhi, Terrence, and Zoo. Is it what I want? No. Is it what's logical for the franchise business-wise? Probably. But that's the facts. Terrence Mann, he needs to play in a more fast-paced system if you want to get the most out of him. If you want to play Harden ball, which is what we do, then that's not going to be... You're not going to get Terrence Mann getting downhill on the fast break. You're not going to get the stops, essentially, enough to me that you need to get up and down. But you know what? He's still a solid player, and if you can pick up where he left off at the end of last season, now that he's going to have a training camp with James, then he can maybe still start. And he did a good enough job on Luka to say, hey, man, I held my own. So he did a better job on Luka than Jaden McDaniels and Lou Dort. But I don't know. Luka was a little bit gimpy. He's getting he's getting warm now. So we know how it is with Luka. Terrence, Terrence can do a job. He's not locking Luka up consistently. Like, let's be real. We've watched, him, we've watched that matchup for five years, four years mainly. Anyway, coming up, though, is he still untouchable? Let's talk about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. It is the NBA Finals right now, and FanDuel is the place to be to bet on just about anything related to the Finals. It doesn't even have to be just who wins the series or who wins a particular game. You can bet on a lot of stuff. And right now, I am looking at the odds for these NBA Finals and... It's, the Celtics are favorite, but I would say place a bet on the Mavs, honestly. I really would with the way they close games. Just food for thought. Again, all the fun stuff's on FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, so to close out the show, by the way, I did make a reference to Clipped. Right. Please let me know in the comment section what you're thinking of that if you're watching. I watched the first two episodes on Wednesday, and it's interesting. Again, it's surreal to have a show about the Clippers, my franchise, our team. I mean, come on. If you guys, have you guys ever watched Love and Basketball? That's an all-time great basketball movie in my opinion. And in that movie... I don't know if I've probably referenced this on Locked on Clippers many times, but I'm still going to do it again because I always want to make it clear where we came from. They said, the Clippers, because someone was like, my dad plays for the Clippers. And the girl said, last time they were good, Dr. J was still a nurse. We make jokes like that. Joanna Mann. Have you ever seen Joanna Mann? That's a classic. (laughs) Where a guy tries to go into the WNBA. A uh, player in the NBA got kicked out of the league, tried to go to the W, trying to, and his agent goes, even the Clippers won't sign you. So, I mean, we were the butt of jokes in movies. Now we got shows about us. I know it's for the wrong reasons, but it's, it's I mean, what ended up happening was good for society, good for the Clippers. So it's just something, you know, reliving games that I was at on a TV show with actors. It's just hilarious. So go check that out. We're going to have some guests talking about that soon. But go check it out. It's on Hulu, by the way. And see if you can, if you guys don't have a Hulu and you don't feel like getting an account, see if you can find, like, I don't know, on YouTube or some kind of a legal thing. Because, like, if I talk about them, I would like you guys to have watched them. Like, come on. For any Clipper fan pre-213, like, real Clipper fans, not these stands that annoy me in the comments, you guys got to go check this out. It's, like, hilarious. Like, Glenn Rivers and Lauren F- Lawrence Fishburne. And, by the way, I will say, I'm giving up too much for future episodes, but the Blake Griffin and Chris Paul actors... While they might not look a lot like them, they do a good job with the voice. And, it's, and, and there's a lot of truth in those in that story. So go check it out before we get in depth about it. But let's go back to Terrence, right? My favorite Clipper. So is he still untouchable? You know, as I said, we're probably not going to find anybody better than him. But you know what? Here's what I'll say. 
I don't want us to trade Terrence to help out 2-1-3 because I'm more committed to Terrence than 2-1-3. I'm done with 2-1-3 because Kawhi can't stay healthy. In terms of like, I don't want to do another year of praying for Kawhi's health. It's not what I want to do. Maybe he will stay healthy next year. Maybe. But like, why would I believe it? Like, why would I bet on that? It's just not logical, unfortunately. Unfortunately. You don't think I want Kawhi to be healthy? Like, come on. Like, I've... It's just, it's just honestly so frustrating at this point. I'm not frustrated with Kawhi. It's just kind of the nature of the, the whole thing. And it's just like, damn. Like, because people don't understand that my frustration is not about Kawhi and Paul George. It's about Blake and Chris. You don't understand. We went from injury-prone stars to this, to even more injury-prone. So, like, you, people don't understand the frustration. It's not like I'm frustrated at them. It's just the fact that we can't catch a damn break. We can't catch a damn break no matter what iteration of this team. It's very frustrating. It can't. I can't believe it got worse than Lob City. I can't. And you stands do not relate. I don't even want to hear what you have to say in the comments. I don't even want to hear it. This is all about the OGs. We've been through a lot. So I don't mind. If, if fans are saying keep the team together, I have no problem with it. If they've been long-term fans, I don't. I have no problem with it. It's your opinion. People saying blow it up, I have no opinion. People saying don't re-sign Paul George, I don't care. The point is, Clipper fans have a right to be frustrated with the, the circumstances. I am not, so I wanted to defend my take. I am, I'd am. i rather have Terrence down this team long term. He's available, and he's going to work with, whether it's, we're rebuilding or whether we're winning now, he's going to help regardless. So I would like to see Terrence stay a Clipper forever. It would be too hard to see him in another uniform after what he's done for us. As far as, is he untouchable? Look, if we were to actually go a different direction, though, he's not untouchable to me. Get what you can. Get what you can. Because if we're going a different direction, I'm all in. Get what you can. And that's the crazy part is if we were to go a different here's the thing even let's say we were trying to keep this team together which we are terrence might be like we might need to trade him i can't lie because he's jerry west said it all to us all the us clipper fans he said that's the main guy everybody calls about in 2023 he said this to me to all of us um and then the uh you know kind of like the meet the player event after the game and it was jerry and he said everybody calls about Terrence because people want guys that guard and do the little things. They don't need the ball to succeed. That's why. So we could get something for him. But, like, are we getting someone that's going to directly be better than Terrence? Right? For this team? I don't know about that. I feel like you could get draft capital for him. But if we're not rebuilding, then what's the point? So, no, I don't think he's untouchable anymore. I don't think he's performance this season warranted enough. I think that slump made it so that was a little bit of a disappointing season. Because we wanted him to start, and he didn't even up his production, really. So, again, I think it was an adjustment playing with Harden. But at the end of the day, there's no excuse. Everybody's got to do what they got to do. And I don't think he did well enough in the playoffs. It, it's, it was fine. Yeah, he was good in the playoffs. I got nothing to say about him in the playoffs. But I know he's going to show up when it counts. That's the thing about Terrence. Which is why I love him so much. I can rely on him to just do his job. But, yeah, that's all I got to say. Keep checking out Clip, though. I'm going to have some people come on. What episode? Keep suggesting episodes, guys. I got to do a mailbag soon. I haven't been checking the comments. I apologize. I've just been so distracted. Like, you know, some practical advice for everybody listening. Like, there's so many distractions with social media nowadays. And especially if you're like a kid that's like my age, between 20 to 30, or especially if you're under 20 listening to this, we are the most distracted generation in the history of mankind. The social media, like, I don't even sometimes like remember in what order I need to do things, like what needs to be prioritized first. I have so much that I feel like I have to do. And I think one thing to really help, I know this is super off topic, but why not? You know, it's, I have, I have no one to talk to on this show except for you. So I'd say like my advice, practical advice is use, use like make lists like of your, like to remind yourself of things that you need to do. Like honestly, write stuff out, write stuff out. I'd say that's something because if you just keep it all in your head when you're so distracted and the, our attention span is like peak ADD, ADHD or whatever, like, you know, write stuff down so you remember things um, and prioritize things because man, I just like. I'm all over the place. But anyway, you can follow me on Twitter at X. X. Like, oh, my God. It felt so weird saying that. Should I? No. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. I, I, I think I also said Twitter and X. I meant Instagram and X. But you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more NBA content where I'll be going live after every finals game. I already have a preview out with a Celtics fan and a, a Mavs fan. And if you're an L.A. Sparks fan, I know I have some crossover of Clipper fans that love the Sparks like me. I'm doing Sparks content every week with my boy Edwin who writes for the Sparks. And I'll probably be at the game on Friday. So if you're at the game, holler at me. Go Sparks, baby. Go Clippers. Uh, subscribe to this channel. You already know how it is. Locked on Clippers. All platforms. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Go watch Clipped on Hulu. 
And the age-old proverb continues, go Clippers. And I love you, Terrence, man. If you're listening or any of your representation is listening, you are one of my favorites of all time.